Christianity may have been born in the Middle East, but Arab Christians have never had it easy there, especially not today. In Iraq and Egypt, scores of churches have been attacked, hundreds murdered. In Syria, revolution seriously threatens Christian communities. The one place where Christians are not suffering from violence is the Holy Land. But Palestinian Christians have been leaving in large numbers for years. So many, the Christian population there is down to less than 2%. And the prospect of holy sites, like Jerusalem and Bethlehem, without local Christians is looming as a real possibility. This is what the Holy Land looks like today. Bethlehem, where Jesus was born, Nazareth, where he grew up, Jerusalem, where he died, and where Christians believe he was resurrected. Nazareth is inside the state of Israel. Bethlehem is on the Israeli-occupied West Bank. The Christian section of Jerusalem is also under Israeli control. We know the area well. Know that it is arguably the most fought over piece of real estate in the world, sacred to half of humanity. Still, when we decided to do the story last year, we did not realize it would become so controversial. The story will continue in a moment. Local Catholics, this is their parish church. The day we went, a confirmation was underway. Father Marwan Didas, a Franciscan, led one child after another up to the altar, watched by proud parents. The church was so crowded, it was difficult to believe that Christians now make up only 18% of what was for centuries an overwhelmingly Christian town. We are the living stones of the Holy Land. From here it all started. And it had to continue, it's a must, it must continue. If there is no people, no Christians here, it will never continue. Inside here, famous church. Theophilus III, the patriarch of the Greek Orthodox, has lived through the decline. His church, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, is the most sacred site in Christendom. He took us up to the roof. You've got to know a patriarch to get here. Come in. So you are in the Holy Sepulchre, inside the Holy Sepulchre. Just inside here is the tomb. That is, the tomb which covers the site of the resurrection. When you first came here in 1964, what was the percentage of Christians in the old city? There were around uh, 30,000 of uh, Christians living in the old city. And now how many are there? Very few. So few, some 11,000 Christians out of a population of almost 800,000, just one and a half percent. Religious leaders are afraid Jerusalem could become a museum, a spiritual theme park, a great place for tourists and pilgrims, but not for the Arab Christians whose roots date back to the church's very beginnings. Christianity started here. The only thing that Palestine was able to export so successfully was Christianity. Mitri Raheb is a Palestinian, a Christian, and a Lutheran minister from Bethlehem. He runs schools, cultural centers, and health clinics. Christianity has actually on the back a stamp saying, Made in Palestine. Palestinian Christians, once a powerful minority, and burgeoning Israeli settlements. Israel has occupied the West Bank for 45 years. If you see what's happening in the West Bank, uh, you will find that the West Bank is becoming more and more like a piece of a Swiss cheese where Israel gets the cheese, that is the land, the water resources, the archaeological sites, and the Palestinians are pushed in the holes behind the walls. Israel built the wall over the last 10 years, which completely separates Israel from the occupied West Bank. The wall was built to stop Palestinian terrorists from getting into Israel, and it's worked. Terrorism has gone down 90%. At the same time, the wall completely surrounds Bethlehem, turning the little town where Christ was born into what its residents call an open-air prison. Do you remember the day they put up the wall? Yeah, actually it was in 2003, and I was about um, 14 years old. I went to school one day. I came back and found the wall surrounding the house. 
Christy Anastas lives with her mother Claire, her father, brother, and sister, in this house, which is surrounded on three sides by the wall. How do you live with this? Well, it's not easy actually, but you get used to it because you have to. The Anastas family lives on the third floor. This is the view from the kitchen, from the master bedroom and bathroom. The children's room has a good view of this Israeli guard tower. The family runs a souvenir shop on the ground floor, sells Christian artifacts on what used to be the busiest commercial street in town. Now, it's a dead end. Members of your family have already left. Yes. And they have asked you to leave too. Yes. What do you say to them? I tell them, we have to stay. We need to stay and struggle and fight. This is our cross. For all Palestinians, just leaving Bethlehem is a struggle. Getting to Jerusalem, only seven miles away, whether it's to pray, go to a doctor, visit family members, or work, means going through this Israeli checkpoint. That can take hours. But before Palestinians can get even this far, they need a permit from the Israelis, which can take weeks or months to obtain, and is frequently denied. We regret any inconvenience caused by the security precautions, but it's their convenience, it's our survival. Michael Oren, who used to be Israel's director of interreligious affairs, is Israel's ambassador to the United States. We have to protect our, our, our country, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do in order to survive. For Palestinian Christians, the survival of their culture is in danger. In towns like Bethlehem, which used to be distinctively Christian, Muslims now are a clear and growing majority. The veil is replacing the cross. But inside Israel, in Christian towns like Nazareth, Arabs are Israeli citizens, and according to Ambassador Oren, they're thriving. The reason Christians are leaving the West Bank, he says, is Islamic extremism. I think that the major problem in the West Bank, as in elsewhere in the Middle East, is that the Christian communities are living under duress. And this duress is coming from Muslims, not from the Israeli occupation? I believe that the major duress is coming from that. Great selling point. Easy to sell to the American public. Zahi Huri is a Palestinian businessman. He owns the West Bank Coca-Cola franchise. I'll tell you, I don't know of anybody, and, and I probably have 12,000 customers here. I've never heard that, that someone is leaving because of Islamic persecution. Harry Shavit, one of Israel's most respected columnists, believes Christians have become collateral damage. I think this is a land that has seen in the last century a terrible struggle between political Judaism and political Islam in different variations. And the Christians are being squeezed in the middle between the Jews and the Muslims. Absolutely. Should Israel be concerned about that? I think we should all be concerned about it. Political Judaism and political Islam are rocky. They are harsh. And the friction, the clash between them, is very violent. In 2009, this group of Christian activists did something unprecedented. They published a document called Kairos, criticizing Islamic extremism and advocating nonviolent resistance to the Israeli occupation, which they called a sin against God. It was endorsed by the leaders of 13 Christian denominations, including Greek Orthodox, Roman Catholic, Lutheran, and Anglican. These are denominations who have been exceedingly critical of the state of Israel, and sometimes to the point of going beyond legitimate criticism. And so, well, what does that mean to go beyond well, I think criticism? accusing us of, um, of crimes that would be very, I think, historically associated with anti-Semitism. And um, it was actually so inflammatory, Bob, that we didn't, many of us didn't even bother responding to it. They are fearful of this document because they are afraid this might influence the Christian world. Reverend Rahib, who helped write the document, says it's anything but anti-Semitic. This document is, doesn't ask for violence, it doesn't ask for revenge. The most powerful thing in this document, actually, is that asking for 
hope and love and faith. Do you think the Israeli government ever thinks of the fact that if Christians aren't being treated well here and America is an overwhelmingly Christian country, that this could have consequences? Israel is not persecuting Christians as Christians. The Christians in the Holy Land suffer from Israeli policies that are a result of the overall tragic situation. And this, of course, has, has consequences for everybody. For Israel, there could be serious economic consequences. According to Israeli government figures, tourism is a multi-billion dollar business there. Most tourists are Christian, many of them are American. That's one reason why Israelis are very sensitive about their image in the United States. And that could be why Ambassador Oren phoned Jeff Fager, the head of CBS News and executive producer of 60 Minutes, while we were still reporting the story long before tonight's broadcast. He said he had information our story was, quote, a hatchet job. It seemed to me outrageous, completely incomprehensible, that at a time when these communities, Christian communities throughout the Middle East, are being oppressed and massacred, when churches are being burnt, when one of the great stories in history is unfolding, I think it's, I think it's, um, I think you got me a little bit mystified. And it was a reason to call the president of, chairman of CBS News. Bob, I'm the ambassador of the state of Israel. I do that very, very infrequently as ambassador. It's a, that's, that's an extraordinary move for me to complain about something. When I heard that you were going to do a story about Christians in the Holy Land, and my assumption, and, and had, I believe, information about the nature of it, and it's been confirmed by this interview today. Nothing has been confirmed by the interview, Mr. Ambassador, mm -hmm. because you don't know what's going to be put on air. Okay, I don't. Tr it's political. Go to 60minutesovertime.com to see what one of the last villages Jesus ever visited looks like today. Sponsored by Pfizer.